Hey, 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 what's going on? What's happening? What's up, everybody? Hey, I am Christopher Harrell, the Kingdom Marketing Superman. And right now, we are doing a special live. I have a, my wife with me, and this is a combo show right now. Uh, my wife's show. What is your show called? All Things Shay. This is my wife, Shala. All Things Shay. And this also uh, is a part of my Chris Harrell show. And this is a special live show we're doing tonight. Uh, doing because of what's the current climate that we have going on in America right now today and I think it's a very important topic and so we had decided to get together and say hey let's just pop on you know and share mm -hmm. share share some information that we hope that both sides will listen to because uh, I think you're gonna be surprised by some things we're gonna share tonight I think you're going to be surprised from uh, the viewpoint we're going to come because the goal is to share truth and love, right? So so that we can uh, understand both sides. And you're going to hear some maybe some shocking stories that might surprise you tonight. And uh, and I believe that uh, you're going to hear some things that also that those on one side have believed for so long, but, but it might not be totally true, and the same for the other. So you ready? Ready. So hopefully you guys can, uh, can hear us right now. Uh, we're going live right now on multiple channels. We're live on Facebook. We're live on Instagram as well. So I'm Instagram folks over here. We're going live on my Facebook folks here. And this is going to also going to be shared on our podcast. On my podcast channel will be shared on YouTube, LinkedIn, other places on social media as well. But right now we're live on Facebook and, and Instagram. And so hopefully you can, you can hear us loud and clear. So um, first topic that we're going to talk about. As you can, you know, depending on when you listen to this, what's today's date? What is today's date? We just got back from a cruise, so our days are off. days are off. <laughs> the 24th. I have my, my assistant director, producer over here, Brianna Harrell, uh, you know, telling me the information that's very important is needed right now. So on the 24th, we, we just recently got back from a cruise, but uh, 24th, something historic happened in America that, uh, that happened, you know, 50 years ago, almost, you know, 50 years to, 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 the, to the T, I think 49 years ago, 50 years ago, and about the Roe versus Wade, and it was overturned today by the Supreme Court. And so there are a lot of emotions on both sides of this, and we want to come from a, a, a cooler perspective and not from our personal opinions, but come from an objective viewpoint, and but also come from a place of truth. So, um, and my wife is going to just be elaborating, share some things as well. So, first thing that I want to come off and say right from the beginning is that everything starts with our viewpoint, paradigm, and values. Um, no matter what it is that you, you and I believe, you know, there's a lot of things happening in America over the last few years. A lot of controversial things, a lot of... Uh, Things that have been very divisive, um, and we and when you look back at all these different issues from racism, from the election, from uh, what else has been happening? Uh, cops, you know, uh, cops killing blacks or whatever, or minorities, from um, you know, certain races going to court, getting off. I mean, from homosexuality. From abortion, what we're going to be talking about tonight, and the pandemic can forget oh, the, all yeah. these plagues. Oh yeah, and the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. you no know, wearing masks, not wearing masks, getting vaccines, not getting vaccines. You know, there have been so many different topics just over the last two, two, three years that has divided this country in half, right? Mm -hmm. And and I believe that if there is not something, if there is no place of apathy, there, if there is no place of putting yourselves uh, with empathy, not apathy, empathy, uh, putting yourselves in the shoes of others, we could be headed for quick destruction in America because the way we're headed right now is not a good sign. I mean, any of your thoughts just, just on that, Shalon, just on the things that's happened in the last two or three years before we get into the topic of the abortion topic? I mean, I I agree um, with everything you said. 
I never thought I would see the things that's going on and you're going to go into a, you're going to cover it. We don't want to go, you know, too deep. Um, but those of you who probably know where I'm coming from, I, the things that we're seeing now, I never thought I would see this in my lifetime. This is some of the things that we read about, but where I read about it, I thought it was going to be down the line after I'm dead, after my kids are gone, but just seeing, reading, and then now living what I've read. Um, so it's kind of scary, but then it's also letting me know the things that I have read and the things that I've been taught for so many years are true. Yeah, yeah, it, it is It is interesting because there's a lot of things, you you know, you read and you're like, yeah, I don't see that happening, you know, and it's happening. And it's happening at a very rapid rate, right. you know, at a, at a very rapid rate. And it's very important that uh, we got to come up, come up with some type of solution, right? And so, so the reason why I started this off is because I don't want to come off, uh, our plan is not to come off judgmental. Mm -hmm. Not to come off pointing a finger at anybody, right? But you need to understand that what you believe, the way you feel about certain things has a lot to do with your viewpoint, your paradigm, and your values, right? Your paradigm is just a set of beliefs that you have garnered over the years from your home, from family, friends, school, your those who you associate with, a church or a religious organization, or right these all have shaped your thoughts and created your worldview you know and and so we all have a worldview and let's talk about specifically with this topic because unless you understand that from the beginning then you need to understand that other people have worldviews as well they have different uh, viewpoints as well they have their own set of values as well but I'm gonna say this where you get your values from means a lot right like what you believe in your set of values or what's right and wrong where they come from where that standard is means a lot and, and, and in order for something to be relatively true for all of us it can't come from us I mean do you agree like to say something is right or wrong it has to be something that's not subjective of yourself because some countries, it's okay to, to, to smack on your wife, right? I mean, mm -hmm. because of their religious viewpoints. There's some countries that treat women like dirt, and it's okay because of their viewpoints, because of their paradigm, what they've been taught. But something to be right or wrong, it has to be something that is not of you. It has to be something that's outside of you, right? And, 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 and unless that is taken into account of how you believe things and, and how you perceive things to be true is chances are that our belief system is going to be in error chances are our opinions and our feelings are going to be in error because they're coming from ourselves and as i mentioned before some days i don't feel like doing anything that doesn't mean make it right or wrong so uh so let's talk about this topic then uh and and, and, I, and I titled this pro-life pro-choice of both because i'm, I'm gonna say this really quick there, there, there might be two, two different types of worldviews watching this video right now. Some people might come from a, a quote-unquote religious worldview. And a religious worldview takes the point of what? Pro-life. Right? right. And, and so like today, the pro-life is celebrating. Over the last 50 years, the pro-choice has been celebrated. Right? And the pro-choice seems to be put on, on one side. The pro-choice. Well, I'm going to say something to you right now that I believe this to be true. That... Our creator has given us a conscience so we can know right from wrong, right? Now, also, you, you can have the Bible, which is, you know, a God-inspired book. But just from your conscience, you know right from wrong. That's because every last one of us, no matter what your religious viewpoint is, no matter uh, uh, how you feel, if you believe in God or not, every last one of us have the conscience. Right, and so, and that conscience is, is, is a guide or a lighthouse, you know, to tell you, you know, you know, you should have done that, or you shouldn't be doing this, or go do this, go do that. Right. So, in order for us to understand, I'm gonna say this too: pro-life, pro-choice of both. Well, 
those who are really religious might be shocked when I say this, but I believe God is pro-choice as well as pro-life. How do you feel about that? Now, religious folks may not get with that. They're like, no, God is pro-life. He's pro-life. He's true. That's true. But he's also pro-choice. And the problem is we got one group on this end, one group on this end, and we're colliding when God has revealed himself to be both pro-choice as well as pro-life. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's profound because Chris actually just shared that thought with me downstairs about an hour ago. So I was like, I never looked at it that way because we are always thinking, you know, pro-choice if we're Christian or we're believers, um, it's, you know, pro-life. So God is pro-life. And we're thinking those of who are pro-choice are against God or, you know, but it just clicked when he said God is both. And then I'm like, he is both. So when he said that, so when he said that, I was like, why don't we speak on, on the topic? Because Chris, he wanted to speak on the topic. I was out and about. And then for some reason, God put it on my spirit that I need to speak out on the topic. I was going to put it on my own YouTube but then Chris said, you know, let's do a joint venture and just do it together. So I thought that was a great idea. But how he put it, God is both pro-choice and pro-life. I thought that was a great, you know, eye-opening because we never look at it that way. Right, right, right. So so what I'm going to do is I'll share some thoughts and also share some scripture references just to kind of back up what I'm saying. Because uh, I do believe that the Constitution... Which is uh, you know what we call something called the Bible today, but I believe that's is, is 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 you know is God inspired, and it's our guide because as I said before, you and I cannot say what's right and wrong, what's right or wrong from our own standard. It has to be something outside of ourselves. It got to be something that is objective and something that presents you know uh, some form of absolute truth. It can't be something that on how we feel today. Then two weeks from now we change, right? We can't say, well, abortion is wrong today. Then two weeks from now, say abortion is right, you know, today. It has, it, truth doesn't change. Facts change. Write that down. Facts change. Truth does not change. Right? People, people used to believe the world was flat. <laughs> people used to believe that we came from monkeys and all that kind of stuff, you know. Or the Darwinism. Well, those are facts. Facts have people used to believe the world is 60 billion years old. Right? We know those facts have changed once more and more scientific evidence presents itself. But the truth has always always been there. So you have to understand that it has to be something outside of ourself. And the only thing outside of you and I is a creator. And I'm, and I'm going to touch on something too that one of the biggest arguments I'm hearing right now from those quote unquote on the pro-choice side is that this is my body. So since this is my body, I can do what I want to do with my body. Now I got my own personal feelings on that. Uh, because you gotta understand. It's not your body. And you're like, no, Chris, it no, it's not your body. And why is it not your body? Let me ask you a question. Did you make yourself? Did you create yourself? Well, of course, you and I both know the answer to that is no. You did not create yourself. So if you did not create yourself, you can't take ownership of something and say, this is mine. So if you didn't create yourself, again, you have to go to something, some source outside of yourself and we go and that source is the creator that we call God. So if, if if you know you didn't make yourself, and we can all go back to the beginning of time, our parents didn't make themselves, our grandparents, right? So that means that since I didn't make myself, whoever made me actually has the ownership over me. Now if you create a robot, who owns that robot? You do. Why? Because you made that robot. But but since you and I didn't make ourselves, we can't say this is my body because it's not your body because you didn't make your body. So that means that our creator gave us his body. And so our creator has the say on how this body should be used since this, uh, this creator made it. What are your thoughts? So to piggyback with, on what Chris said, so um, I think God gave me this thought. And you probably heard about this um, before, but... And the type of job that I have, I'm a trainer. So I always have to break it down and give them examples. So basically, 
to piggyback on what Chris was saying. So my, a car. So the, my, I have an affinity and I also have a neon. So with my neon, I always put unleaded fuel in the neon because it's a four cylinder. The maker Dodge says I need to put, um, I can put unleaded fuel. So now that I have an affinity, the owner's manual of the infinity, because the infinity made my car, infinity created my car, all of the parts they know where all of the parts go and they know what type of gas that I need to put in that car in order for that car to run efficiently. Now, because of all the gas prices, I could say, you know, I'm not going to put premium in my car. I'm going to put unleaded. So I have a choice. The manual is telling me to, for my car to run efficiently, I need to put premium. But if I want to go the cheap route, or if I say, you know what, it's my car. I know infinity, you made the car, you have the manual on the car, but it's my car. I make the car notes on it. So I'm going to put unleaded. I have a choice. So I have a choice to put unleaded in my car. But if I do that, there's going to be consequences of putting unleaded in my car instead of premium. So I just kind of wanted to break down what he says. It's yes, we're operating this body, but God created this body. So we are to do with this body what God created this body for. Yeah, and that's that's a great point. Great point. And just to share a couple of scripture references to back of what I'm saying, um, 1 Corinthians 6.13 and 1 Corinthians 6.19 talks about the topic of our bodies. And this... Now, in this passage, it's talk, it, it, specifically he's talking to people who are believers in Christ, but it actually goes for the whole human race. Again, because every last one of us, no matter who you are, what you believe in, every last one of us is made in the image of God. Don't care what religious faction you have, what non-religious faction you have, if you're existing today, you were made in the image of God. And so this applies to you as well about your body. Because like I said, big argument, this is my body. Well, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about, it said, food is for the stomach and the stomach is for food, but God will do away both of them. He said, yet the body, this physical body, this physical flesh here, is not for immorality. It means, and this word immorality is pornea, P-O-R-N-E-I-A in the Greek, and it means fornication, adultery, incest. There's another word uh, later on down the line, it means homosexuality. But it's talking about this. He said, but the body is for the Lord and the Lord is for the body. Now, if you read, if you scroll down a more, verse eighteen, it, tell, it talks about your body and uh, your flee immorality again. And here it's talking about free fleeing sin. It says, you know, every other sin that a man, mankind, commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple or a house of the Holy Spirit? So your body was created to house the Spirit of God. Right? It's a housing unit because we are spirit beings. You and I are all spirit beings, and this body is a, a external be, an external body, like a house. It says, so, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own. See? We can't say this is mine because we did not make it. Right? So, and there are more scripts, but I, I just want to share that because, you know, a lot of us believe that, you know, well, I made this body. I mean, I, I mean, this is my body. I can do what I want to do. If I want to have an abortion, I can have an abortion. If I want to commit adultery, if I want to commit fornication, if I want to commit homosexuality, if I want to, I mean, go on and on and on. I want incest, right? Well, I can do what I want. Well, hopefully you see by now that you see, well, you know, I didn't make myself. So, I mean, I had to submit to a higher authority who made me and find out what that creator, or like my wife said, that manufacturer says on how I should conduct myself with this body. What I should put in it, how I should use it, right? Because in order to get the maximum benefit from it. So, we have to understand this. So, this is not our body. So, that's one argument that, that I hear the product of pro-choices saying. Also, pro-choices talk, you know, there are other scriptures, talk out a whole bunch, I'm not going to dive into all of it, but if you read Romans 8, 1 through 8, uh, Joshua 24, 15, uh, Deuteronomy 30, 11, like my wife said something important, she said that you can choose to do what you want. See, here is why God is pro-choice. God would not force him, force you to love him. 
He will not force you to do what's best for you. He will not force you to do it because if you're forced to do something, right, then it's not love. Right? God loves you so much that he will let you choose to uh, do whatever to your own body. However, there's always a consequence. Right? Every choice has a consequence. Throughout scripture, Joshua 24, 15, God says, choose this day who you will serve. If you read Romans 8, uh, 1 through 18 through 32, God said right there, he has chosen to give those who want to commit homosexuality to a reprobate mind. God said, I will let them choose that lifestyle. Why? Because they have chosen to reject the truth that I put in them. Their conscience tells them, that I know this is, is right, but conscience tells them that I know what I'm doing is unnatural. Women, men, with women, men, women, men. It's, it's scientifically unnatural. Why? Because you cannot procreate life. And that's another topic about God's pro-life. So it's unnatural, right? But God says, but since they have chosen that lifestyle, I'm going to let them do that. And also what's going to come with that, they're going to choose the destruction that comes with it. And even read De Deuteronomy 30, this is God was telling the people of Israel, hey, choose life this day by obeying my guidelines that will give you a prosperous and successful life or choose death this day by not obeying. So throughout scripture, God is pro-choice. So if any religious, ever, any religious person have told you God is not pro-choice, they're, they're misinformed. God is 100% pro-choice. Anything we'll touch on that for going pro-life? Well, again, just going back, breaking it down again. So that was a great point that you had. So what I, I'm confused with pro choicers or, you know, it's no different than being a parent. So you don't have to believe in God or be a Christian to be a parent. You're going to give your kids guidelines. So you're, you're going to tell your kids, if you do this, you'll get this. If you don't do this, this is your consequence. It's the same with God. And it's the same with um, how it is in the world today. If you break the law you're going to pay the consequences. And that's just how life is. So if we punish our kids, if we break the law, we're gonna to go to jail or we're gonna to have to pay a fine or there's consequences to our action and that's in everyday life. Why is it so different when God tells us the same thing? Right, and it, and it comes down to, you know, uh, see people think God, God, God is some religious, God is about religion. God is not about religion. Unfortunately, God's Christianity has taught us these things is incorrect. Catholicism has taught you things that are incorrect. A lot of other religions, Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism, Hebrew Israelites, and all the other cults, those things are all incorrect interpretations of God. God is not religious. We are all made in the image of God. So that right there connects you to God. It has nothing to do with religion. If you read the first three books of Genesis, it has nothing to do with religion. You made an image of God. So God never created religion. Unfortunately, man has twisted things in that viewpoint. So you have to understand that it's not about religion. The Bible is not a religious book. Not at all. It's been misinterpreted, mistaught. That's why people are turned off by it. But when I say the Bible is not a religious book, religious people kill Jesus. So Jesus is not a religious person. Jesus did not store the religion of Christianity. Okay? So this is we're not talking about religion. We're talking about relationship with your creator who made you. And so again, if, like my wife said, if you go buy a car, and his car said put premium gas in your car because they give you the owner's manual or the guy, and you say, you know what? No, I'm going to put orange juice in my car because I like drinking the orange juice. Well, what's going to happen? That car is going to malfunction. So our creator has given all of us a guidebook, giving us a conscience, number one, take you right from wrong, and number two is giving us a guidebook to say, hey, do this, this, and this, and you will live the best life possible on this planet. But if you choose to disregard that, then you're going to live a lot of trouble, a lot of consequences that come with that. No different. Like you said, you break the law of the law of the land. If I go out and sell drugs and, you know, and, and go to jail, that's my fault. I chose to break the law of the land. Now I got to deal with the consequences of it. No different, guys. It's not about religion at all. So please realize this is not, nothing to do with religion. Religion sucks. Religion is called more problems than anything else in this world today. So, so God is going to say pro-choice. Now, let's talk about the pro-life side. Okay? 
Um, people say, well, people say, well, what if I get raped? What if, what if my dad, had, my stepdad had sex with me? I get pregnant by that. What about that? Now I can't have an abortion. So, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, with that, I can empathize, but I can. That's some of the excuses that they have. But when you do the research, the people that are having an abortion is not due to rape. They're having an abortion because they're with their husbands, um, wives, they're with their boyfriends, and they just don't want to have kids. So there are some circumstances where a person was molested or raped and they ended up pregnant. But if you do your research, that is a low percentage. Yeah. So you we can't use that as an excuse. We're using abortion as birth control birth control after the fact mm. instead of yeah. you know protecting yourself using condoms or getting on birth control we have so many contraceptives but people refuse to use them and they just keep getting pregnant and pregnant or they're or they're just scared they could have been getting pregnant for the first time but i understand i can empathize because you're scared and you don't want to be a mother or you don't want to be a father and you want to the abortion? You think the abortion is the first answer, and it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're right. Because if you do check the numbers for his rape, incest, you know, been been molested, I don't know the exact numbers, but I guarantee it's less than three percent of all pregnancies are conceived from those circumstances. So yeah. So uh, what it has to do with guys is something that we all want to do. It's something I remember that. Uh, I was thinking when, you know, uh, when us, you know, uh, we didn't want to have kids at a period of time and we started using condoms and it made me think like the only people that buy condoms are those who are in sin. Either you're, you're having sex, you're committing adultery, you're having sex with somebody you're not married to or somebody else's spouse, you commit fornication, both of you are not married and you're having sex with one another, you commit homosexuality, right? Or, or, or something, but usually that's the only time you need to buy it because most, if you're married to the opposite sex, as we should be, you know, male and female, as is natural and is ordained, then we wouldn't really need to have condoms. And it made me think of that, right? And he said, with, with, with the abortion, I ain't go people saying rape and incest, right? Most of, most of the pregnancies are from sin. You're having sex with your boyfriend, you're not married to. You having sex with somebody else's spouse, or and, and, and so it so that comes a bit out of alignment with what your Creator wants you to do, because and we all been there. I'm, I'm guilty of it, right? But but if we if we get in alignment, what our Creator wants us to do, then those things wouldn't take place. So yeah, so we can't justify that because at the end of the day, Scripture shows us that God said He He's the one who opens and closes the womb. So God controls who's pregnant, who's not pregnant. Because for years we tried to get pregnant, never did. I, I have friends who for years could never conceive a child. Then about 15, later, 15 years later in that marriage, they conceived the child. And they, they paid doctors tens of thousands of dollars. It wouldn't work. They said, to stop paying these doctors, just wait, trust God. All of a sudden they conceived. Why? Because God is in control of that. So if someone were to be molested or raped, God and, 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 and God has control if that womb is open and closed. If God does not want a baby to be conceived, guess what? A baby would not be conceived. But if a baby is conceived, according to the scriptures, it said because God has, has a plan and purpose for that child. Even despite of sin. Many folks have been birthed through sin. Heck, I, I was conceived in sin. My parents weren't married. So was I. So, so, and, and probably 99% of you watching this video <laughs> or listening to this audio will concede through sin. Yet, a purpose. you have a purpose. You know, look at our shirts. You are created to succeed. If God did not plan for you to be here, you wouldn't be here. And it goes the same thing for you. If unfortunately one of those one or two percent of situations happen to you, realize that, see, if you read scriptures, Genesis 30 this young lady named Rachel. She couldn't conceive. God said, I'll open and close the womb. Read 1 Samuel 1, 5, and 6. A lady named Hannah.
God said, I, I, I closed the womb. But then in due season, he opened the womb, right? Uh, if you read Genesis 2018, it says God closes the womb. Uh, so, so when the womb is open, Jeremiah 1 5 tells us why, because God has a, has a purpose and a plan for that child. God said, I knew you in the when I formed you in the womb to give you a future and a hope. See, what we have to do, guys, is trust less of ourselves, get in alignment with our Creator, not get religious, but get in alignment with our Creator, and start doing the things that our Creator wants us to do. Because, yeah, God is definitely pro life. I got so many verses on another tab. I don't have enough time to read right now, but I'll put it on that the tab next next to it, next next to what tab you on right now. I'm just gonna give you some scripture references. Read Psalm 139, Psalm 127, Job 31 15, Psalm 127, Isaiah 44 2, Psalm 139 13, Isaiah 49 5, Jeremiah 145, Isaiah 44 24, Luke 114. Keep going. Isaiah 49 1, Job 10 8 and 12, Ecclesiastics 11 5. See, I mean, I go on and on. Uh, Ecclesiastes 1 5 says, And you do not know the, the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with child. So you do not know the work of God who makes everything. You know, it, 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 Exodus 20 13 says, You should not murder. Now, abortion is murder in the eyes of God. Again, it doesn't matter what you and I think. Because we didn't make ourselves, so, so we got to see what the Creator outside of ourselves. So God said it's murder. Because God says the moment you're conceived, that's life. If you if you if you read the script I just gave you, Genesis 29, 31, when the Lord saw that Leah was was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Uh, I mean, you go throughout this, throughout this, throughout this, Exodus 23, 25, 26, Psalm 51, 15, right? So, here's a perfect verse. Behold, I was brought, I was brought forth in iniquity, and, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So, so, even if you were born through sin, even if it was a horrific circumstances such as rape, molestation, God has a purpose for you and a plan for you to do good in this world, for you to benefit one another. And, and God loves the kids. You read Matthew 18 and 10, scroll it up some. It says, see that you do not despise any of these little ones, the babies. If I tell you that in heaven, their angels always see their face of the Father who is in heaven. So throughout the scripture, throughout the, you see what God is a pro, is pro-life. He is one percent pro-life and he protects the children. The moment you are conceived, not the moment birth, the moment you are conceived, God said the moment you conceive, I knew you. So conception in God's eyes is life. And if we do anything to do that, to terminate that in the eyes of God, not the eyes of a doctor, not the eyes of ourselves, not the eyes of a political party, but in the eyes of your creator who made you, that's murder. Anything you want to say on that? No, that's good. Yeah. So if a child is conceived, even out of sin, adultery, fornication, rape, incest, it's because God created that life. God created that life. And what we have to do, guys, we have to submit to our feelings. We have to submit our emotions. Because most of the time, our feelings, our emotions are incorrectly placed. We can respect them, but most of the time they're not based on truth. They're based on emotion. And emotions change. Tomorrow, I may have a bellyache. And I ain't gonna feel like doing nothing, right? So emotions change, they come and go. But again, truth doesn't. And that's why we want to do this thing again. For, for to come come to you from a place in love. Because I'm sure you could be watching this, maybe you committed abortion. I mean, I've had family members who've done that. I mean, I shucks. I, I can remember encouraging that when I was many, many younger with my girlfriend. Many, 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 many years ago. Because why? I did not want to have a child. But I was thinking of myself. See, we have to stop making decisions of ourselves. Why? Because we didn't make ourselves. And it's not about you and I. It's about the greater good, the greater purpose. And so, just imagine 
How, just imagine this. If you're watching this video now, thank God your parents didn't abort you. You know? Think about that. You can't even you can't even listen to this or watch this if you were aborted. So we wanted to do this to share. I don't know if anything you want to share personal or not is up to you. But um, we wanted to do this video, this 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 podcast, this episode to share that God is both pro life and God is both pro choice. He's both, but just realize that. Every choice has a consequence. And we want you to choose wisely because we want the greater good for everybody. You know, it's, it's a dream of mine that if we, if you and I will learn to love one another, if you and I will learn to do the things we're supposed to do, this world will be a better place. You know, and uh, so I hope that this was valuable. I hope that you see our hearts. We, we didn't come from a place of judgment. We've been there. I've supported People having abortions in the past uh, because I was thinking of myself. Mm -hmm. And usually when you commit abortion, you're thinking of yourself. Yeah. The male, you know, it's especially the female. And if you ever talk to a woman who's done that, most of them have a lot of emotional challenges with that. Most of them have a lot of very emotional challenges with that. And, 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 and it's understandable. Because they know there was something alive in them. Because you never, you don't know what you're carrying. Mm -hmm. You have, you have no idea what you're carrying. And despite how that child was conceived, worst case scenario, give it up for abortion. Adoption. Oh, adoption. Yeah. yeah, adoption. Give it up for adoption. But give that child a chance. If you don't want it, give that child a chance. Because there are, there are women who are barren. There were women who, who, who were praying and going to doctors and spending twenty, thirty thousand dollars on these doctors. They tried everything, and they see, and they would just, they won't just one child. They won't just one. So, yeah, give it up for adoption, but give that child a chance. That child deserves a chance, and and, and, and realize that God has put that child in your womb for a purpose. Anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, I have. Two things. So going um, back to what you were saying that God opens and closes the womb. Now, this is again, this is a very tough and a very sensitive subject. It's really hard for us to wrap our minds around it because I question it. I say, God, why do you keep giving this person kids when this person don't need any more kids or this kid died or this um this baby died because this woman's boyfriend killed the baby. So it's just like, but you have people out here that have nice jobs that have good families that want babies and they can't have babies. So it's hard for me to wrap my mind around it, but we just have to understand that God has a purpose. Now, um, Caleb had a birthday party in May. One of the mothers there, the kids, um, the three kids that she had there at the party, or the kid that she had there at the party, she had three other kids. She told us that they were adopted. Her husband, her and her husband were unable to have their own kid. So they adopted four kids. 17 years later, she's almost in her 50s. She told us she was pregnant at the party. Hmm. So I looked at it as if God had opened her womb at that time and they were able to have their own children, she probably wouldn't have adopted those four children mm -hmm. but because she adopted those four children and she gave them a home and those children were actually siblings so they were separated and she was able to adopt the siblings and then once she did that god opened her womb and allowed her and her husband to have their own child so again like chris was saying we think about things we put our own emotions and we say this isn't right we have to get our emotions out of it because again god is the creator god knows all he sees all we don't know everything that he sees so anything that goes on even if it's good or bad in our life or unexpected he already have a plan so if that baby was a mistake or that baby was an accident or that baby was um, because of a rape god already made provisions for that baby but he gave you the choice. I already have provisions for that baby. You can keep the baby. I'm going to help you take care of that baby. Um, if you don't want to have the baby, 
give it up for adoption, but God has made provisions. But as Chris said, he also gave you a choice. You could either give this baby life or you can give this baby death. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people have chosen death. So going into that, I had three abortions and I had abortions because two of them were predatory situations. So I was scared. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't have this. Um, if I have it, this person is going to find out. This person is going to get in trouble. Uh, my mom is going to disown me. So I had an abortion twice because of a predatory situation and because I was scared. But I also knew deep down that it was wrong. I, of course, I was young. I was 15 the first time and I was 17 the second time. So even though it was a predatory situation, deep down inside, I knew that it was wrong. The, the third time I had an abortion, I moved out of my mom's house. I've moved in with my boyfriend. We were together. I got pregnant. But because I had those two abortions, I'm like, oh, so this is, this is what I do. I don't want the baby. I just get an abortion. But in that cold room after, and this is, you know, I don't mean to be graphic. The first two times I was asleep. The last time I was awake. So they were doing the procedure while I was awake. So I was hearing what they were doing and the fetus was put next to me in a trash bag. And then the, the doctor left and left me in a cold, dark room. So I remember saying to myself, even though I knew it was wrong, but no one ever gave me scripture or anything that told me it was wrong, deep down inside, God, God gives you, um, he gives you a compass letting you know if something is, is right or wrong or something is sin or evil or, or, or whatnot. So I remember having, giving him a promise I said, God, if I were ever to get pregnant again, I would never do this again. The next time I got pregnant, of course, I was married and then we had our daughter. But I said that to say that even if you had an abortion and God, for, God forgives you, God, he can forgive you and he will forgive you. But of course, he forgave me. But there's a consequence because I look at now, I'm like, well, what if I had a boy or what if I had a girl? I wonder what he or she would be like. I wonder if I, if they had lived, she would, or he or she would have been this old. So it was like, you do live with those regrets. So, so for those of you who've never experienced it, who've never done it, and you're saying Roe versus Wade, this is crazy. You have to live it to understand both sides. But because I lived it, I understand both sides. I understand the pro-life side. I understand that God says it's sin. And I understand that God has a purpose for every child. But I also understand the other part, being afraid, being fearful, maybe being, um, what is that? What is that word? Like not knowing the word, but you don't have to know the word or you don't have to go to church to know that something is wrong because God put a moral compass in all of us, letting us know what's right and what's wrong. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. You know, and I hope that definitely, uh, people see the realness that you've been there, been on both sides of it and experienced it. And like you said, uh, yeah, we, we get it. Why? You know, you, I know what I want. I didn't want to have a kid cause I, I felt it would ruin my life. I was like, no, nah, I can't have a kid right now. You know, but, but, but I was real younger. So I had forced one of my girlfriends to get an abortion. Cause yeah, I was like, no, I don't need no kid. I'm in the Air Force. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, you know, I'm trying to see the world, you now, and so, uh, yeah. I mean, so we, we 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 get it if you fit in a situation, but like Shalane said, something powerful that even if you have done it, God will forgive you. God will forgive you. You know, there's, you know, you might have felt well, I, I did it, and I went to this church, and they condemned me for that. That's not God. God will forgive you. God is not really God. God will forgive you, right? So, um, so if if you've done that, and 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 you felt that in your conscience, and I know this is not right, and you maybe saw the the body parts of that, that baby being just tossed away like trash, that, that, that you know, and, and that's that's a human being, and 
And then, you know, maybe for, maybe for years you felt guilty. Maybe, you know, there'd been some quietness in, inside of you and uh, maybe you have never told anybody. If you're watching this, we, what we want to do is pray for you right now. But first we understand that are you going to say, Lord, forgive me and God will forgive you. It's not about a religious ritual because God loves you. He has still has a plan and purpose for you. And and all have sinned and fallen short of, of the glory of God. Every, every last one of us. And we just want to make sure going forward that we're doing the things that God wants us to do. That's why it's so important to, to get back in relationship with your creator. And, and, to, and to begin to align yourself with the guidelines that he has given us so we, you, can, you can live the life he has planned and purpose for you on this planet, which is the best life you can possibly live. So, um, mm, with that being said, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, here's our daughter right here, guys. She's our oldest, you know, and God brought her out, you know, as we got married, our firstborn. You come and share about say hi. She's been uh, helping us produce and direct this album, Brianna, right now. <laughs> so, you know, and, and, you know, we have two two other boys downstairs right now. They're 12 and 8, Josiah and Caleb. And, uh, yeah, so uh, just I hope this impacted you. I hope this made you think. I hope that uh, we can move from one side, move from one side, and come where God is. God is pro-choice and pro-life. It's not about CNN, MSNBC being pro-choice. It's not about Fox News and America, One American News being pro-life. God has nothing to do with that division. God is pro-choice and pro-life. And, and, and we're just wanting the best for the entire human race here on this planet. There's you know, some of the things that we need fixing. But again, it starts with us looking outside of ourselves and not thinking of ourselves and getting our truths from a source that's not from us. So, uh, anything else you want to add? No. No? Well, awesome. Well, I hope this has been valuable. We've been going over well over 40, 40, 45 plus minutes, 47 minutes now. So, if you found this valuable, uh, let us know what you find valuable about this in the comments or uh, shoot us a message. I see my folks on Instagram. What's going on, my Instagram folks over there? I see you guys got ch chiming in a lot. Let us know your thoughts over there on Instagram. Type in the comments your thoughts as well. And if you guys are watching this later on a, other YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, wherever else you might be seeing this, other places, let us know your thoughts as well. We would like to know your thoughts. If you agree, you would disagree. Either way, it's all love. And I'll, let, uh, I'll and if you do disagree, no problems. Just share your your viewpoints. Just don't be in your emotions. Share share your viewpoints, you know, in, in, a, in a logical way. And we can have a great dialogue about it. Because that's really what it's about. Uh, one thing that, that we, we did on a cruise, we went to a comedy show. And I remember the comedian would say it was white, black, and everything else inside of there. And we all was all common. There was no racism, no, no political parties, no Democrat, no Republican, no... Uh, Gun, no, no gun control talk, no homosexuality talk, no, you know, whatever, abortion. We're all, was all one because we're all one human race, right? And we just have to surrender to our creator who made all of us in his image. And then everything could be worked out as way that he intended for everything to be worked out here. So if you're watching this, I want you to know you are created to succeed. See our shirts? It's based off my book, Kingdom Affirmations. If you don't have it, you go get a free copy right now. Go to kingdomaffirmations.com and get a free copy. We'll, we'll ship you a free copy. Just cover the shipping and handling. This will help you a lot. And I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read this. I happen to turn right to it because I read this page a lot. But on page 13, it says, "I am created to succeed." That's an affirmation. And the scripture says, "I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking." It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even form me, you inform every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place, in the womb, carefully, 
skillfully shaping me from nothing to something. You saw, you you saw who created me. To, you saw who created me to be before I came. Me, before I even seen the light of day. The number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. That's Psalm 139, 14 and 16. And here's my thoughts on this. We'll read this to you. I said, we are not accidents. God created every cell in our bodies with magnificent detail. The systems that exist in our bodies are so brilliant that the smartest computer scientists in the world could never scratch the surface. Everything is designed to work and function without us needing to tinker with it. Just look at your hand. Your eyes, your fingers, your feet, your toes, and your brain that allows you to reason and see how great your creator truly is. So my friend, you are created for a purpose. You are created to succeed and prosper. And we want you to know that and believe that. Again, go get a free copy of my book right now. Go to kingdomaffirmations.com. And I do have one more thing mm -hmm. before we leave. Okay, so... Um, if you or if you know someone who has had an abortion or if you know someone or you are pregnant and considering abortion and you want to reach out to me and talk to me or if you just want prayer or you just want a, a community to rally around you, um, comment in this Facebook group. You can also um, reach out to me at my YouTube page, All Things Shay, and that's with a Z. Um, or my Facebook, Shalon Harold. Um, you can look me up that way um, because this is my first time actually talking about this publicly. I've told some people here and there. I finally told my mother at age 40. So when I, I'm 43, when I turned 40, I actually had a conversation with my mother and that was freeing. So once I had the conversation with my mother and that freed me to, to where she knew exactly, I feel free. So again, if you want to reach out to me, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to talk with you, pray with you, give you scriptures, and just be that support system. Awesome. Awesome. And what's your YouTube channel again? All Things Shay. And Things is with a Z instead of an S. So subscribe to All Things Shay on YouTube. Also, go check out the Chris Harrell Show. It's on every single podcast app you have out there. Or you go to my YouTube channel, type in Chris Harrell Show. And it'll pop up for you on my YouTube channel as well. And uh, so, yeah, this, is, this has been great. This has been awesome. I hope you find it beneficial. So let's pray. Um, I believe uh, I believe someone's watching this right now. And I believe that your creator is speaking to your heart. And so we're just going to come in agreement with you. And so virtually hold hands with us right now. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this, this session, this topic that was talked about today. We know, Lord, that your word said all things work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose, Father God. So we know that even today today, a lot of people are upset, but a lot of people are joyful, but uh, the situation has been reversed as well. So everything's worked together for good. Lord, we ask that all of us who are made in your image will step outside of ourselves, step outside of our emotions, lay our pride down, lay our ego down, lay our wants down. Lay our desires down and begin to examine ourselves and say, okay, huh, maybe it is another viewpoint to this that I'm not looking at. Maybe it is another standard to this that I, that I have not been receiving. Maybe it is some truths to this that I've been rejecting because of how I feel and what I want. But maybe it's, it's something better for me that, 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 that I'm missing, Lord, and that better is you. You created them. You created all of us in our image. It's not about religion. It's not about rituals. You created us for relationship. And you created us for a purpose. You created us to rule and to domain and, and, and have the best life possible on this planet. So, Father God, I ask that those watching you right now will come to want to know you. I also ask if we all if we make the mistakes of sexual sin of, or, 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 or of abortion, you know, we, 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 we ask you to forgive us, Lord. We know you said you are faithful and just to forgive us. We just confess. We just come to you. Not prideful and say, Lord, forgive me. Creator, forgive me. I messed up. I know it wasn't right. Help me not to do this again. He will forgive you. He will free you up. And that burden, that guilt can leave you. And, and, if, and, if, and if you have, you know, uh, been molested or uh, raped and anything like that, 
I, I'm asking the, the believer right, the, the creator right now to touch your heart and mind, to comfort you, to give you peace, to give you the willingness to even forgive the offender and trust God will deal with that offender as well. But Lord, we thank you for this topic. We pray for peace. We pray for uh, unity. We pray for America, Father God, to submit itself. We pray for America to humble itself. We pray for America, Father God, to base everything off of your standard, your guidelines, and your, your principles and your truths, which you have revealed to us in our conscience, revealed to us in the Bible, because it, it, will, it, will, it will cause and create the life that you want us to have here on this planet. So we thank you for everything. Thank you for everything that's been shared today. And we pray, Father God, that it, that it impacts just one life. If it impacts one life, then we've done our job, done our purpose. We've created this episode. So we thank you, Lord, that you get the glory through everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Like I said, reach out to us. Any questions, comments, feedback, anything like this, we're here for you. Reach out to us. Don't fail to do so. Remember this. Put God first in all that you do. And you too shall succeed. Peace and God bless.